Okay, we have another lecture today that is um, related to Kanban systems and also Kaizen systems. Let's, le let's watch this video and I will introduce you to an area, Kanban area. To begin, let's first understand what is Kanban. Kanban is a Japanese term for a visual system which is used to trigger activity upstream in a given process. This system contains the critical information that controls the production of the right products in the right quantity and at the right time. Kanban is the key tool to manage just-in-time production, which is a major part of the Toyota production system. Toyota and many other companies use Kanban as a simple and direct form of communication inside the production process. The basic Kanban activates material movement when people in a downstream process come to the upstream process to withdraw the correct quantity of parts at the right time. Then, as a result of this withdrawal, the preceding process produces only enough parts to replace those that have been withdrawn. This, in essence, connects the two processes and creates a pull system. As each sub-process within an organization is connected by a Kanban system, the entire process begins to act as a single unit, where the product is pulled to the customer demand. This results in the elimination of excess inventory, excessive equipment, and the risk of wasted material during model changeover. The most important point to remember about a Kanban system is that the best Kanban system is no Kanban system. The use of Kanban is only a substitute for not being able to implement single piece flow in your process. Kanban is a scheduling system for lean and just-in-time production processes. But what is it about? The word Kanban stands for Kan, which means card, and Ban, which means signal. It is a system which historically used cards to denote the need for further inventory. Hi, I'm Jim Benson, creator of Personal Kanban. Kanban we have just a few minutes, minutes here to talk about what a personal Kanban is and how to use one. So, I think that if you're watching this video, you're going to be able to control your work, to get a handle on all of the demands on your time. And the fact is that everybody watching this video does have a lot of system. They signal the need to move material and the need for further. But what is it about? The word Kanban stands for Kan, which means card, and Ban, which means signal. It is a system which historically used cards to denote the need for further inventory. Kanban was developed in the 1940s at Toyota in Japan. It improves and maintains a high level of production. Additionally, it became an effective tool in support of running a production system as a whole. Kanban cards are a key component of a Kanban system. They signal the need to move materials within a manufacturing or production facility, or move materials from an outside supplier into the production facility. Consumption drives demand for more production, and demand for more product is signaled by the Kanban card. Kanban card therefore help to create a demand-driven system. But how does it work? Let's explain Kanban by describing the three bin system. This is a simple system that can be implemented for the supplied parts where there is no in-house manufacturing. One bin is on the factory floor, the initial demand point. One bin is in the factory store, the inventory control point. And one bin is at the supplier's business. The bins usually have a removal card containing the product details and other relevant information, the classic Kanban card. When the bin on the factory floor becomes empty, this is an indication that there was demand from parts. Afterwards, the empty bin and Kanban cards are returned to the factory store. 
The factory store then replaces the bin on the factory floor with a full bin from stock, which also contains a Kanban card. The factory store then informs the supplier's business and returns the now empty bin with its Kanban card. The supplier's full product bin with its Kanban card is then delivered into the factory store, completing the final step in the system. Thus, the process will never run out of product. It's a closed-loop system in that it provides the exact amount required with only one spare bin, so there will never be an oversupply. This spare bin allows for the uncertainties in supply, use and transport that are found in the inventory system. The secret to a good Kanban system is to calculate just enough Kanban cards required for each product. So how is it used? Kanban has evolved over the years and has subsequently become much more digital. Electronic Kanban, sometimes referred to as e-Kanban, is a signaling system that uses a mix of technology to trigger the movement of materials within a manufacturing or production facility. Electronic Kanban is different from traditional Kanban in that it uses modern technology to replace traditional elements such as camera cards with barcodes and electronic messages. That is the Kanban system. Okay, so as you notice in the videos, the Kanban means many things. But literally, the Kanban is a Japanese word that means visual card. Uh, the Toyota uh, production systems, Kanban is a term used for visual and physical signing or signing system that ties together the whole lean production system. Kanban is, a lean, is in a lean production system and is over a half of the century old, so it's a very old technique. And it's been adopted by some disciplines, specifically like you said in the software area where you have the material uh, resource planning area and so on. So it becomes a little more sophisticated nowadays. So in general, so how does Kanban work? So there are uh, many flavors of Kanban, specifically when you talk about visualization and visualizing the workflow. So in this case, split the workflow into pieces, write each item on a card, and put them on the wall. Use name columns and illustrate where each item is in the workflow. The limit the working process. That means assign explicit limits to how many items may be in, work, in process at each workflow state. Measure the lead time. Lead time is actually another important concept in Kanban. You have to know the lead time when you, when you work with Kanban as well. So it's the average time to complete an item, sometimes called cycle time, but it's essentially uh, is the time that you, when you start working on a product until you finish it. Optimize the process to make the lead time is, is as small and predictable as possible. So this is something that is a focus of attention for anybody. Optimization of the process to make lead time as small and predictable as possible. This is a direct implementation of lean pool scheduling systems. As you notice in there, you are talking about pooling systems in here. So let me talk, let me, let's watch a video for a Kanban example. Um, through some using some lean principles so that 
they can manage the throughput of supplies in that area, but at the same time, improve on the work that's here in our place as well. So I'd like to introduce you to our staff. Or maybe I should ask them to introduce yourselves. Yeah. My name is Josie, I'm the Chinese nurse in the program. My name is Sally, and I'm the TA team attendant in the operating room. And I'm Ophelia, I'm in charge of orthopedic. I'm Nina Ramos, I'm in charge of general surgery. I'm John Kinnitz, I'm Mark Yen, and I'm a staff nurse. I should underline too that the, uh, the staff here, who, or that you currently see, is just a small snapshot of the tremendous contributions of staff throughout the entire department that can do. So the two-way Kanban is a system that we've implemented that allows you to eliminate waste, access, and also allows you to communicate without actually having to speak. So there's different ways of setting it up, and we've chosen two ways to do that. So there, the products are set up side by side and front to back, both containing the same things. There is a red tag and a green tag that's on the label. And the green tag is the first where you take the product from, and then the red tag serves as the backup. There are lots of changes and improvements um, has been done since we have this 5S, the tubing Kanban system, uh, like um, placement of supplies, being more organized and um, systematic, and uh, like um, the common or special items um, has been uh, put together or uh, compartmentalized or organized uh, according to services uh, and for easy access. These changes really uh, help us a lot, especially when we're looking for some materials that the students need. We can easily see now because uh, everything is uh, arranged in um, uh, by order. Like, um, if you need something for dress, then you can easily go to the dressing section. And this makes, you know, less wait for the doctor, less stress for the nurses, then happy nurses, we can serve the, we can produce um, a better service to the patient. Efficiency, this is what I can say, because uh, uh, if you can take the materials in the start corridor right away to the surgeon, then there's no less weight, and this will um, provide less delay for the patients, of course, less um, delay for the cases, and at the end, there's no cancellation for the cases. So I'm not saying this is uh, one reason uh, delaying the cases, but this is one factor to delay the cases, but then this system is it make all everything efficient because you can easily go around in there and get the material that we need because of it's, it's arranged properly. So it really helps everything. So a lot of the changes that we've done have really helped and we've reduced a lot of waste and ex expiring um, uh, equipment or um, supplies in this case. So what I've come to realize is that we work hand in hand with our um, restocking staff um, from our stores and one thing I've noticed is that we use a lot of sterile gowns and sponges so we've been limited to the amount of sponges and gowns that we've uh, we use so we use those items more frequently so it's one thing that we can communicate and have uh, an increase in the amount of products that we use on a regular basis. So I don't find that it's a challenge, more or less of a concern, because it can always be um, increased of the amount that we will use. So I think we've come a long way, and it's uh, becoming a very good system, an efficient system for our sterile core and our work team. So this is the best part of the show for me by far. Take a walk over here with me. As we're talking about the two bin Kanban system, we have our green label and the red label. I can pull it out for you to see. Right here is where we start pulling the product from, which is the green label. And right here is the red, which serves as our backup. And if we don't have any, without, as I was saying before, without communicating, you don't need to. 
we have this, which lets you know that the product is being ordered. So no one needs to tell us that the product is being ordered. We have it right here. And this allows everything to be in order. We don't run out of anything and we know what's going on at all times. All right, and the same as over here. This is the side by side as I was talking, the green side and the red side, and this is the back to front. And because things are in order, we eliminate the products being expired because that way they're able to be reused and not overstocked. And also the two bin system allow us to have the first in and first out system. It's where we store our case card and it's all um, by section, like the case card for over two or three, four, five, and six. So whatever we need, we can just grab our case card going straight down to our ORs. And it, we will not, we, we don't stop our case card in the corridor because it's it will be like, uh, it will be an obstacle or an obstruction for us. <laughs> So, the Kanban implementation on implementing Kanban, as well as lean manufacturing tools such as 5S, Kaizen, and so on, can have significant benefits at any type of work, just like the way you saw it in the video, it's a healthcare um, industry. Kanban is faster, more efficient, saves significant money over most other production models. Kanban system is also far more directly responsive to customer demand. Kanban is a system that visually indicates when production should start and stop. So you could easily um, combine Kanban with other processes. And in Kanban, the first step is to visualize your current process, just as it is, in order to see the battle next. Then introduce the working process limits and start a path of evolution that might or might not modify or replace your current process over time. So in here, you actually need to open this file, the Kanban uh, lecture that is posted on Canvas to have a, a better a visual a, a way to see this table in here, but it's an interesting table because it has the comparison between other systems and the Kanban system and how the Kanban system is is actually um, helping or the benefits of, of using it. Let's say in here the Kanban system is good for differing the, the lot sizes and also there's a sequencing in here involved that will help uh, in the Kanban system and a more moderate and balanced process. So this is a very useful technique for that. Other techniques like pre-order, broadcast, and so on will do very similar things, but Kaman has a very specific uh, benefits. And, and one of them is actually unbalancing, unbalancing a, a workflow method. What are the benefits of Kaman? So, so some benefits could be bottlenecks become clearly visible in, the, in real time. Another one is useful for situations where operations and support teams have a high rate of uncertainty and, and, and variability, like the healthcare situation. Tends to naturally spread throughout the, the organization and to other departments such as HR, sales. There will be increasing vis visibility of everything that is going on in the company. Kanban is a very good tool, like the way you saw it in the in the video for reducing inventory. This is just an example, will reduce inventory over from 25 to 75%. That's a very good number. And it will free, it will, in Kanban, in addition to that, all of this space free, are free by the implementation of Kanban system and can be used for future expansion and new opportunities. If you notice in the, in the video, where the lady is in the area of um, uh, where they have the cloth classified in different cards that in where the cards were placed 
if you notice in there, there's a limitation on the floor. So everybody knows where the card is actually uh, being located. Improve workflow. The visual organized environment ensures all parts are easily found and continually stocked. The speed of moving from one task to another one is significantly reduced by the creation of clearly marked flow lines, Kanban cards, and clearly marked labels. Prevent overproduction because parts are not I mean, created at the visual sign by the Kanban label link. In, I mean, sorry, because parts are only created at the visual sign by the Kanban label link, inventory is much likely to be overproduced, resulting in significant savings in the holding of stock. Improves responsiveness to change changes in demands. Also minimize risk of obsolete inventory because inventory is only created as it is needed. Common misunderstanding of gamma. There's always like that. There's something always out there about misunderstanding gamma. There's a myth that the gamma you do not use iterations. The fact is that with company iterations are optionals. Do it only if you have a need for it in your text context. Another myth is that common in common you don't estimate. The fact is that common estimation is optional. You do it only if you have a need for it in your context. Another myth is that common is a better, better than other tools. Kaman is just a process tool, and there is no such a thing as universally good or bad tool. Kaman is a drop-in replacement of other tools. Kaman is just about managing workflow. It's ha it hardly replaces everything, anything. What it does, it, I mean, do. However, it drives change. Kaman, in Kaman, you start with whatever process you have, Visualize it, introduce working process, and then evolve from there. Let's talk about another technique that is usually combined with Kanban that is called Kaizen. So let's watch this video about what Kaizen means, and I will explain you another example of that. Hi there, my name is Ron Pereira. I'd like to welcome you to the first video of the most requested course we've ever released here at Gemba Academy. Well, specifically, this course is going to be focused on all things Kaizen. So, no matter if you're interested in learning more about Kaizen events or suggestion systems, or you simply want to know how Kaizen applies to you, you're in the right place. Now, in this first module, we're going to get things started by offering an overview of what Kaizen is and how it applies to anyone, no matter if you work in an office, produce widgets in a factory, or take care of patients in a hospital. And just to give you a little taste of what the Kaizen mindset's all about, you'll also get to witness Kaizen in action as we venture into my kitchen. All right, well, well let's get things started by learning exactly what Kaizen is. Well, literally translated, the word Kaizen means to change for the better. Well, taking it a bit further, with Kaizen, there's actually a sense of breaking down the current process, removing the unnecessary parts, and putting it back together in an improved manner. But to be sure, Kaizen is not a revolutionary process where all the knowledge and experience of the past is thrown out. Rather, when we do Kaizen correctly, we take a look at the current process, break it apart, and put it back together again. As such, the result should be an improved process that fully utilizes all the experience and skill of the people involved. Well, Kaizen is also a cornerstone of the Lean Enterprise as it works together in harmony with other Lean tools and concepts such as standard work and Heijunka, or level loading. Now, in order to effectively practice Kaizen, we must first understand three key concepts we refer to as the three Gens, sometimes called the three actuals. Well, first, when we do Kaizen, we must go to the Genba, or Gemba, as it's most commonly referred. The word Gemba literally means the actual place. In other words, it's the place the work is done. 
Now for some, a gimbal might be the factory floor or a construction site or the operating room in a hospital. To be sure, the chance of Kaizen success is much higher when we go into the Gemba instead of spending all of our time in a boardroom drawing on flip charts and whiteboards. Now, in the same spirit, rather than looking at drawings or other forms of documentation, this helps if we look at the actual parts, which was what the word Genbitsu means. So, instead of looking at a flow chart, as an example, we'd be better off if we spend the time walking and experiencing the process for ourselves. Finally, getting the facts doesn't mean a divorce from feelings and theories. Rather, it simply means we need to get facts that either prove or disprove our ideas in a non-emotional manner. Well, this is what the word genjutsu means. It helps us understand what's really happening. In other words, it helps us understand what words like rarely or always actually mean. Now, oftentimes, when we get the facts, we see that something else is causing the problem, or we realize the problem may be bigger or smaller than we think it really is. But once our team is armed with the facts, it'll be a lot easier to convince people the changes we hope to implement. Now then, when we do Kaizen within a workplace, we often use an expression that states that we must earn the right to go into the kitchen. Now this means that we can't simply barge into someone's work area and start asking questions or changing things. And just like we wouldn't visit someone's home and go right into their kitchen without permission, when we do Kaizen, we need to earn the right by showing respect and developing trust first. Now, with this said, I'd now like to warmly welcome you into my kitchen in order to give you a little taste of what this Kaizen mindset is all about. Now, for this simulation, we're going to be studying a process my family and I imagine many of your families know very well. And that process is emptying the dishwasher. Now then, let's take a look at the current before Kaizen process. Notice that our operator, who, I might add, is extremely experienced unloading dishes, first fumbles around as she picks up the silverware. She then takes around six steps, which equates to around 12 feet, in order to reach the drawer with the silverware tray. She then places the silverware into the tray, as we see here. After this, she turns around and repeats the process until she's placed the last piece of silverware into the drawer. Now let's watch the rest of this process take place. Now then, when the team analyzed this process, they learned that it took a total of 1 minute and 25 seconds to unload the silverware, and that our operator took a total of 30 steps, covering approximately 60 feet. This was then used as their before Kaizen baseline performance. Now, with this data captured, it was time for our kitchen Kaizen team to make some improvements. Now, the first thing the team focused on was how to reduce the trouble the operator experienced when picking up the silverware, as well as placing it into the drawer. Well, after some discussion, the team decided to practice the straighten aspect of 5S. Specifically, they decided to change the way the dishwasher was loaded. Well, in the original process, the silverware loading operator simply placed the silverware anywhere in the holder since no one had ever asked them to do it another way. Unfortunately, this only led to problems for the unloading operator. So, a small change was made whereby all the spoons were loaded beside each other, as were all the other forks and the knives. Now, this change didn't create any extra work for the loading team, but the unloading operator felt this change would definitely help her. The next problem the team focused on was the amount of walking the operator was forced to do. Well, the first idea the team came up with was to simply move the silverware tray to a closer drawer. This would immediately reduce the amount of walking required by more than half. Additionally, one of the younger Kaizen team members came up with an additional idea no one else had thought of. How about we just take the chair and put it over there? Her 
idea was to simply pick the holder up, carry it to the drawer, and then unload the silverware instead of taking separate trips back and forth. Now, the other Kaizen team members were excited to give this a try, which was exactly what they did next. Now, as you see here, the operator now picks up the silverware holder, carries it a few feet to the drawer, and commences to unload the silverware, as we see here. So obviously, nearly all the walking has been eliminated, and while there's still an opportunity to improve the handling of the silverware, this new process is much better. In fact, this new process, using the same amount of silverware, only took 38 seconds, and the total distance walk was less than six feet. But when we compare the metrics, we see that the total time to unload a silverware went from 1 minute and 25 seconds down to 38 seconds, an improvement of 47 seconds. And the total distance walk per day was reduced by 54 feet or 3.72 miles per year. So, in just a short time, our kitchen Kaizen team has been able to radically reduce the time it takes to unload silverware from a dishwasher. Additionally, the team is now excited to continue making improvements, which their live-in lean consultant is very happy to hear. Now, while I'm pretty sure most of the people watching this video don't unload dishes for a living, I bet with some critical thinking, you'll be able to identify many areas within your business where this type of Kaizen mindset will lead to big improvements. And to be clear, the improvements we make through Kaizen don't have to be cycle time related like we saw in this example. Instead, we might focus on improving other metrics like on-time delivery, defects, or variability within the process. To be sure, no matter the problem, the Kaizen mindset can help. All right, well, throughout the rest of this course, we're gonna cover many aspects of Kaizen, including the Kaizen event. But before then, if you haven't already done so, I'd like to encourage you to watch the Kaizen video from our Lean Lingo Explained course as Brad Schmidt, who happens to be fluent in Japanese, breaks down the Jap... Okay, so you probably will have a chance to watch the other videos anyway. There are tons of videos out there for Kaizen, and just to make sure everybody knows there are two words combining in one that is a change for the better. So in Kaizen is the means to achieve a corporate strategy. And it came out from the person who created this concept was uh, Masaki Imai. And of course, this is another Japanese, Japanese concept or Japanese philosophy that is focused on making improvements. So there are so oh, oh, many things to think about this, but essentially implementation of Kaizen or Kaizen aims to improve all activities and processes and eliminate waste and excess, just like the way you saw it in the video, elimination of walking time, elimination of a, um, a, the ways to do things like wasted movements as well, although there are improvements to make in there in arrangement of the silverware, but still the, there's a show in the reduction, specifically in the walking time. So uh, the history of um, Kaizen is actually came in the 1980s, like many other lean tools as well. And like we said, is proposed by Masaki Imai. And also, this is not a 1980s tool, it's a little longer or older than that, that was implemented in the World War II. And, um, in a development of a training that was called or is called training within industry to increase its, its manufacturing cap capacity. Edward uh, Deming were also, was also involved on this uh, implementing Kaizen and other aspects to the to Toyota production systems. So these uh, systems were explored in the 1950s, but they were, they took a um, a lot of activity in the 1980s, like we saw that. So Kaizen facility, facility operates on the motion or notion that everybody and his or her ideas are an asset to the company. Any idea is an asset to the company. An environment, an environment where mutual respect and positive recognition are fostered will prompt operation. 
open, open communication. If you notice in here, just like the video shows, this is a very important aspect. Respect, recognition, communication is part of this uh, technique. The Kaizen is, is a very important technique because it is, why it is important to focus on this involvement of people is you need to um, more than convince people that their work or whatever they do is, is recognized, is that actually whatever they do will actually positively affect what they do. That's why it is important to to have a, a um, tra as part of the training is have a, um, a a very good set of ways to convince them that this is a, something good for them by showing them information like this video is a very important video for everybody to watch to say yes things can be done and many times when you have companies and you have a, a, a unions or any other groups that um, are actually created as part of the organization, things could become a little hectic because you first of all have to convince a union to implement things like that, but once you convince them or you convince a group of people that you are working on that this is a good tool for for them to do more efficient things, then that's when you will see a lot of good results. So Kaizen can be implemented in many ways as an individual with a small team approach or in a broad room, almost anywhere at any time. It is a philosophy or effective improvement and implementation. So there are so many things in here to think about, and, and uh, Kaizen is a process-focused philosophy of change and improvement. Follow it and see small changes to lead to big pro profits. Suggestions and changes they lead to and should be implemented immediately in a Kaizen improvement. Implementation of new ideas or reinforcement of all practices is made clear with con concise, descriptive labels and signs. Kaizen relies upon the visual organization of a space. Clear and precise markings are a necessary component of its implementation. Long-lasting OSHA safety signs, hazard warnings, labels and identification signs and labels from the basis of Kaizen, form the basis of Kaizen process. All of these are part of the Kaizen process. Remember, Kaizen is a very visual uh, technique. Uh, you didn't see it in, the, in this example because it was just a purely explanation of what Kaizen, Kaizen means, but in the reality, you have to use the visual organization space and use whatever is already implemented specifically in terms of OSHA. So, example is of a, um, hazard warning labels. Depending on the severity of the hazard, there are several types of labels and signs that can be used. A danger side or label is used when the hazard presents a life-threatening danger, warning and cautious. All of these can be also part of the Kaizen. As usual, just like in Kanban, there are misconceptions about Kaizen. Uh, implement, people might think that improvements only happen when things are done right, so an improper implementation of Kaizen does, does little good. It takes dedication, commitment, and underlying understanding of implementation of Kaizen properly. One common misconception is that Kaizen only works in Japan. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. So many companies use it in here in Mexico, India, Vietnam, China. China, everybody. All of this manufacturing, assembly, uh, kind of production, they use Kaizen as a daily basis. Kaizen is based on the training within industry program. One developed once developed and, and deployed they, to great success within the United States, Kaizen has worked around the world, not only in the United States. Imperfections with Kaizen. Kaizen needs to be supported from the bottom up, from the top down. It is a long-term process. It's not a one-time event, unfortunately. 
So Kaizen is a largely self-motivated, mm, you saw that in there, because it is driven by individual input and uh, execution. Company results can vary. Of course, you have to include the, uh, the executive support or the managerial, top man man managerial support. They have to be involved on this uh, implementation of Kaizen. Success with Kaizen, <coughs> the goal of Kaizen, which is part of the continuous improvement, is obviously desirable. Business during or dotting the globe have implemented this lean methodology to augment profits, improve safety, increase customer retention, and boost employee satisfaction. Another company that has been using a Kaizen is Sony, Fleetwoods, and so many other companies out there. So again, the benefits of Kaizen, Kaizen is the philosophy that meant to improve, to mo promote improvement. It benefits, or the benefits of Kaizen are the improvements themselves. Kaizen champions the notion that the small changes in the workplace can result in profit or increased profit, lower employee safety risk, and better utilization of resources. Kaizen in all forms has been shown to radically improve work environments, saving companies millions of dollars on making employees healthier and happier. Kaizen is about enacting change clearly, concisely. It gives employees a real sense of accomplishment as a million tiny steps mm, to a massive change in safety, in structure, and in profits. So, uh, you gotta do something when you do Kaizen. And specifically, when you talk about continuous improvement, continuous improvement, you have to think about in continuous improvement from Deming, Edwards Deming, you gotta do something that is called plan, do, check, and not act. And this is something good because it wants you want to, like in the video, make sure that you always do that, that those things all the time the right way and the, the same way, you got to imp implement the standardization. So standardizing is part of this uh, Kaizen methodology. So let's just talk about the typical Kaizen examples, and this could be uh, implemented in, in anywhere. The, the use of a, a beans in a company, C for classifying and also organizing elements. These could be combined with the 5S as well. Uh, see the different uh, ways to uh, devices to implement in here. There's something that I want you to watch, but I'm not going to watch it in here because it's a very long video. It's a Toyota production system video and it talks about all of the tools, tools we have covered in class. So let me just show you something in here that I have experience with in, in a company about the implementation of Kaizen. Can, can we show this uh, paper, please? Okay, let's do something. So I got a chance to work on this factory where we had um, U-shaped kind of a manufacturing cells dealing with um, a eight to ten people in the, in the manufacturing cell, all of them were con, uh, uh, cross-trained. And what they were doing in this uh, particular facility, they were building a, um, a, um, a control, is a controller for a refrigerator. So is this device was a very small device that was actually built in this U-shaped kind of assembly line. Assembly done in a U-shaped manufacturing process. But anyway, the process begins on this area and finish in this area when the last operator, a, a, what this person did was actually put a, the whole a, a temperature controller inside of their a specific box and all of the boxes were accumulated in another box in another in another and there were accumulated in boxes over a bin 
then the um, a forklift will come and pick up the bin, the bin to put it on a trailer. See, fast production directly to the trailer, directly to the supplier. I mean, to the supplier, to the customer. Anyway, so <coughs> as part of this process, they had um, a system in here. It was not a conveyance, conveyor system, system per, per se, but they had a bin system in here where each one of the operators will gather by gravity, like the way you saw it in there, in beans, the raw material. So somebody from outside the this uh, cell will come and then will be checking through a Kanban system when these, when these people were needing parts and will be replacing and bringing more material into the, into the bins. So it's complete thing. The reason I'm, I'm showing you this, this picture is that there, there was an implementation of a Kaman system combined with a Kaizen system. So the, the way, the way I like, or the reason I like this, this system is that the Kaizen, Kaizen system was, was implemented in each one of the stations for each one of the operators, and let me tell you how. I'm putting these squares in here to show, to show a, the, a, a space a um, reserve for Kaizen. Let me show you this example. So imagine the person number one in here and the person number two in here. Cross train, that means that each one of them will do will know what each one of them will be working on. They were standing in front of a table, as, as a matter of fact, that's something I didn't like, but they were standing the whole day. The tables were actually um, adjusted to their height ergonomically, and it, each one of, the, of them will be have a machine or device, whatever they needed to do for production. And then the, the way they implemented Kaizen is that over the table, they draw a picture in here, in, in the tables, where this picture will show a space, and this space what actually, was actually a space where this person, person number one, was, was actually locating what this person was doing in this way and this way. So what this, peop, what this person was doing, the person number one was doing, is whenever this person finishes, he can and, and fill out fill in this space. He won't make more parts until until this person finishes. So he won't he won't saturate this area. So the reason for doing this kaizen is that he will actually locate the parts in in the in the place with a limitation of of the time so time was involving here in terms of how much can we can I produce and how fast so this Kaizen and Kanban system will help the operator to say okay I just need to make this number of parts that will fit this area and and not anymore in my next friend in my next operator doesn't um, work as fast as this guy and then this method won't work. But essentially, the thing that the thing that working here is that this space allow for the whole process to have a pace. So there was a pace in here, and that was involved with something another concept that is called tag time, where you actually have a pace of production that you don't produce more. This person was pulling in a pulling system what this person had to do. So I'm not gonna, this system creates a, this person to work at a pace and not work faster or slower. So this person was pulling the system, pulling back and say, okay, I'm, I'm pr producing this, this, another part. And this person was, this person was following the pace of this or the next guy. So essentially the last person in the line is the one that actually was pulling, sorry, pulling from the previous one the production and also making a pace for production. Of course, a pace for production pace 
has to be related to the other elements that we didn't see in this class, but you will see it in another class that is called calculation of the cycle time or also called a standard time. The standard time is a method to implement for cal estimating how much time it takes for somebody to do an operation and just standardize it. It is part of a class that is called Methods Engineering, so that's another class that you, we will encourage you to take where you uh, learn how to um, calculate the standard time for this person to, to, to know, uh, standardize, do it exactly the same way all the time. Standardize not only the way to do things, but also uh, standardize it in terms of time. This is the time it's going to take you to do certain things. That the standard time was related to the pace as well, and and also the pooling system. So there are various concepts involved in this uh, scenario. Pooling system is one. The standard time is another one. Creating a pace is another one. The Kaman system and and the, and the Kaizen system, all of them were involved in the same area. So that's that's something that I want you to do in the next homework assignment. You are going to have to do a homework assignment where you are going to have BS to combine Kanban with Kaizen systems in there. And you will be asked to use the, the, the example that you used before with 5S, if you can. If not, and then use another application to implement Kanban and Kaizen. At least two Kaizen, at least two. You are going to have to ask, I mean, you are ask your you're asked to do implement at least two Kaizen improvements in the area, production, situation, whatever you are. I highly suggest you apply it in the place that you work so you can at least see the improvements. Something that you have to do, and this is not only for homework assignments or anything, is that before you implement any tool like 5S, Kanban, Kaizen, is you have to evaluate the situation as it is, the current situation. Once you evaluate the current situation, then do the implementation, implement techniques or philosophies. And once you do that, and then you evaluate the after, the after implementation. So you evaluate the before, before and after, and see what kind of improvements were done. Normally, we do set up a, a statistical analysis to see, collect data for the before and collect data, data for the after, and then you make conclusions based on a statistical analysis. That's when you set up hypothesis testing and, and other kind of testing techniques to do um, a proof that there was an improvement or not in your uh, implementation of techniques. That's what normally uh, things are done in a company. You just don't say, I am going to implement something. Oh, yeah, yeah, but what are your results? How your results will be uh, shown? How you are going to prove or, te or tell your manager managerial levels? See, there's an improvement in here. That's why Six, six Sigma is for. It's not just implementing techniques, but also evaluated. You have to have a reason for doing things. You have to say, I have a problem right now, and this is a proof for that. So maybe control charts, maybe a 5S will allow you to do this. Maybe a, um, a cost, no, the cost, I mean, a Pareto chart will also help you to do this. Once you evaluate a situation and say, I have a problem, and here is a, a proof that I have a problem, implement a solution, which could be Kaizen, Kanban, 5S, anything, you might uh, think that is the best solution. And then once you implement, you evaluate the after implementation situation and collect data and see and observe if you actually did an improvement or not. And like I said, normally you do this with the statistical analysis. It's a, it's a very a common tool for a observing if there, wa there were some improvements in here or improvements were done. This is a typical project that you do in, in, 
in a, in a factory. You do before, after, statistically proved, implementation of a technique. For your homework assignment, I'm not going to ask you to do a statistical analysis of the implementation, but you are going to have to have evidence of there's a, a, a problem, ev evidence of the improvement, and you're going to come up with conclusions. Because we have a very short period of time, there's no, we are not asking you for the statistical analysis in here. Okay, that will be all for today, and um, if you have any questions, so email me through Canvas. Bye, thank you.